Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Heavy Repping. My name is John Tron Davidson and I'm here once again in our super best ultra science test location in the southwest of England. So for this week's video I'm doing something a little bit different and I'm hoping that in time to come this will be a normal weekly video that I'll do in addition to the other videos that come out every Friday morning. Every week I go to the Topsham Brewery Jam and play with a whole bunch of different musicians, revolving door bassists and drummers and sax players and stuff, but I tend to find that I'm the only guitar player that's there a lot of the time. Now obviously that is unusual for a jam, but it gives me a great opportunity to take down picks that I've had from different companies during the week and then see what they're like in a live setting. Normally what I do is I take this mint tin and I fill it with picks and I go through them and I change them all the time and see how I feel. But because I'm trying to be a little bit more scientific about this process, I thought what I'd do is just take three down and I would change them once every hour because we normally play from two till about kind of six, seven o'clock. So it gave me an opportunity to see what they were like without deliberately without having a backup. So for this inaugural broadcast of what I'm terming the Sunday special, uh, I decided I would take the following plectrums. The Gravity 003XL, the Howling Monkey Primate, and the Plectrum Shield. So what I've got is a little bit of footage of me taking these picks down and using them in a live setting with the band, and uh, I'll play a bit of that, and then I'll tell you what these picks were like in a real world setting rather than just here in the office. Let's go. So let's talk about the Gravity 003XL. Uh, this is the pick that Gravity had uh, sort of been slightly reticent to make because every pick company that does anything, they all make a version of the Jazz 3, which is totally understandable because, as I have found, players that are more predisposed to use the Jazz 3 tend to be a little bit more open to trying other things just to get that little bit extra and I know that they didn't really want to do it initially, but I shall tell you two things. Number one, it is nothing like a Jazz 3 in terms of its behavior, certainly a Jazz 3 XL. And number two, it is slightly disappointing. The reason that I say that is because I'm a big, big, big fan of the XL shape. The shape of this, great. The grip, fantastic, it's acrylic. Um, the finishing is up to gravi Gravity's typical very high standard and because they ghost buff or master polish the edges um, it's got a little bit more chop and a little bit more grip than you get from a normal Jazz 3 like a stiff or whatever but acrylic once it goes under 2mm feels a little bit fragile to me when I'm playing it. Uh, now I don't string particularly heavy, I only play 10 to 46s in standard but I found that I was really conscious of this and as a result, even though it's got, you know, it's got a nice balance and all the rest of it, I just, I was aware that I was playing it and my experience of all of the plectrums I've had so far is that if you keep thinking about the fact that you're playing it, it's kind of not doing its job properly. Um, I would say that, and I, I, I mean this with the best will in the world, Anything that you get from Gravity, from 2 mil and up, you'll be laughing all day. They're unbelievable. I've got a whole box of them here, and there's nothing in that box that I don't enjoy using. My, the only one I don't 
really get on with is the 003, which is a great shame because I was really excited to try it. Uh, and I think that it is, rather than being a viable alternative to the Jazz 3 XL, I think it's kind of its own thing. If you were to put this against, say, the Altex XL, this has got a lot more sophistication to it. Uh, if you put it next to the Jazz 3 Stiffle, then it's got a lot more poke and clarity. It doesn't have that roundedness that you get with the nylon, but it just felt a bit, in, in real world application, it just felt a little bit flimsy. So that is my assessment, but as I'm always saying here at Heavy Repping, it is only my opinion. I'm only one person, only one player. If you played that pick and it blew your mind, that's the whole point. So just remember that before you start doing this in the comments. So let's talk about the Howling Monkey Primate. Now, these are made from Tagua and they all vary a little bit in thickness. This one is 2.6 millimeters thick and they're all hand finished by Brian out in Rochester, New York. Now, I'm a big fan of Howling Monkey. Uh, I really like what they do and I really like their ethos and their whole approach and all the rest of it. And of the three picks that I took with me this Sunday, this was the one I used the most. Now, there's a lot of reasons for that. Firstly, it's the fact that this is a thickness with which I'm more comfortable. Anything over sort of two mil, two and a half mil is starting to get into my warm zone. But also it's the tone of this. Tagawa's got a great uh, depth and warmth and sort of, it's a punch, but it's not an all time smack you in the pus sort of punch. It's, it's, got, it's got depth and I really, really enjoyed using it. I will also say that one of the unique things about Tagua is that as it gets hotter, it starts to change shape, but very, very slightly. And it started to, as the day went on, because it was quite a humid day, so we were going for like hours. After a time, it started to pull around a little bit. I could feel it just very slightly curving around my thumb. And it meant that I felt more connected to what was going on. Of the three, this was probably my favorite experience out of their range, this is the best one I've tried for acoustic playing especially, but out of their range I still prefer uh, the Fat Jazz to this because it's a little bit smaller, it's more in that classic Jazz 3 XL size which is my preferred size, but that was ace, really really good, um, really enjoyed it and I think if I had been playing acoustic or electric, and that is an important thing, I would have been able to use this for both, whereas there are a lot of picks that I feel work really well in an electric context and not so well in acoustic because they're too hard or they're too thin or they just don't work with bronze properly. Um, but that did both, so thumbs up to the monkey. So let's talk about the Plextrum Shield. Uh, this one is 6.4 mil. That means it's actually thicker than the 003 XL and the Primate combined twice. It's made from a material called Midtech, which I think is some sort of UHMWPE. It's like an advanced thermoplastic, and it feels kind of hairy. This piece is highly indicative of the picks that I've had from Plextrum or Purple Plectrums, as you might know them. And one of the things that sort of defines their plectrums is that they have this they have this feel and this sound I can't quite put my finger on it it's it's something that I really really enjoy but it's it's kind of a like a weird sort of distance it's not aloof in the sense of being up here it gives you the notes but they've got this sort of secretive very thin sort of cloak over the front of them. I know that sounds like a weird description, but if you if you play them, you'll know what I mean. Um, they're, Ser they're Sergio, which is a wee tiny uh, sort of Jazz 3 thing that I covered in the aforementioned Jazz 3 Alternatives video. That's got the same thing, even though the material's not the same, so it's something to do with the way that they make their shapes. If you'll notice from this, hopefully you'll be able to see it here. It sort of goes out and then in a little bit and it's curved at the tops sort of very slightly 
um, like that, like going in. The grip is almost non-existent when you're used to playing acrylics or thermoplastics or even to a certain extent Delrin because it's like, I mean you can almost, you can hear it almost like, it almost sounds hairy. Uh, a friend of mine touched this and said it feels like a tarantula's bottom. Now I haven't touched the tarantula's bottom but I get where he's coming from with it. The tone is very big. Uh, I really do like the tone of this. And this has been one of my constant bugbears with uh, UHMWPE and partly why I wanted to start doing this series. I love the sound so much, but the grip is confusing because if your fingers are wet, he said, and I just rub on there like that and then hold it, it's super grippy. So when you're in a live setting and you're sweaty and you're getting all that, like it's, it's not going anywhere. And also, because of the material they're made from, there's so much power. I mean, it really is stupid, but there's so much power that actually ho holding it tightly just doesn't, it's not necessary. And as I got into the set, I found I was relaxing with it a bit more. I find that for single note work, it's hilarious. Like there's so little resistance from anything uh, that you're sort of doing, as if it's, it's just not even, it's just not even an issue. Uh, especially if you were playing at speed. If you got a relaxed hand and you're playing at speed, it's like the strings are just <laughs> fantastic. I genuinely enjoyed the sound of it, though the feel of it feels a bit weird. But again, I stress, and I cannot stress this enough, that is not a Plextrum thing, that is a material thing, and I would suggest that you try it. Because once you hear the tone of that, when you go back to other picks, they sound kind of flimsy and a bit sort of half-assed. So very, very important thing to do. So what do I take away from all this? It's an interesting experiment because as somebody who hot swaps their picks in and out all the time, and this is just the stuff that's in the dish at the moment on the desk, <laughs> it's quite eye-opening to, to only have the three options. And to limit myself to that and the experience of that. So it meant that while I'm playing and I'm getting all caught up in it, do I, not, do I still notice that I'm holding the pick? Am I still really aware of the fact that I'm trying to assess it? And what I tried to measure it against in a real world sort of approach was if I'm playing and I'm not, I'm enjoying the music and I'm, I'm making the music because it's all improvised stuff. If I enjoy that and I'm not thinking about the pick that I'm holding, then it's doing the job. But in the meantime, I genuinely hope that you've enjoyed this inaugural episode of the Sunday Special. I'm going to try and finesse it a little more so that you can enjoy it even more and tidy it up a little bit. But uh, hopefully it's helpful for you when you come to choosing a pick for live work particularly. In the meantime, don't forget to go to heavyrepping.com for latest articles, interviews, videos and news, uh, and not to mention the science and everything else that is coming. There's also, we're getting perilously close to having the brand new website, which I'm really excited about, and there's a couple of other things in the works that I can't discuss at this time, but hopefully uh, will come off. Um, I would also like to say that those of you who might be missing the stick this week, although I know it was in the footage. It's actually at the doctor's at the moment. Uh, I'm changing string gauge and I'm having new knobs put on it, which is something that I'm actually quite excited about, but I'm gonna talk a bit more, more about that on Instagram, uh, which you can follow at Heavy Repping. In the meantime, my name is John Tron Davidson. This is Heavy Repping, and I shall see you all soon. Don't forget, we've got a new video coming out every Friday morning. Uh, and I will try and get this other video on the go every Monday as well, but that might take a little bit of time, so do bear with me. However, I hope you have a wonderful afternoon, and just remember, if you're not sure what to do, rep hard, rep heavy. <laughs>